All right. It, fun night tonight. It's going to be a fun night. So we got. God, I've, how long have you known Stuart? I've known him since not, June 30th of 55. I don't remember the year, but I know since uh, fourth grade. Okay. Fourth grade. And you know what else? Really a surprise. And he didn't know this was going to happen. Our fourth grade teacher, Stuart and I were in the same fourth grade class, Miss Reibold, now she's Mrs. Allison. She's was here a again? Guest. She's she here was again. a guest on our show. She was a guest, but she came back with her husband, Tom. And there you go. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, so this is going to be... You know, this is going to be like an old home week. It's going to be a different kind of show tonight. So. You, you said their marriage won't last. No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. All right, well, are you, are you right, about let's ready? Let's get Stuart out. Let's let's get him out. All right. Where is he? Ryan on the set. All right. Hey. Stuart, come on down. Hey. What's the step? You're From the iconic Corky and Lenny's restaurant in Delicatessen. We are the Fabulous Boomer Boys with our original member of the Fabulous Boomer Boys, Stuart Fenton is our special guest tonight. Oh. I'm Bob Snyder, this is my friend from the fourth grade, Bruce Bogart, and my other friend from the fourth grade, Stuart Fenton, and that's when the three of us all met, and we are now brothers. Yes, we are. You Thanks for a little going. emotional. Yeah. He doesn't have too many friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get this picture? That's a great oh, awesome. Do you see, see that? Huh? That picture is from July Do you remember everybody? 1987. That's right. This is uh, we had a group of about 18 guys that uh, where we were friends with. Yeah. Go, help me. <laughs> well, we had a lot of friends, and there were circles within the friends, but we were a big circle. Um, crowds here. Arthur's here tonight. And um, you know, there's we another were friends. picture. Some in of the those guys. days, you we we all stayed in the same school system. We all went to the same schools. Most of them one of wound up at the Ohio State University of Columbus, Ohio. Some of us, of us even graduated, and uh, it was great. And and I can tell you, Bob, is it true? I mean, Stuart's been at all my weddings. How about you? He's been at all of mine. Well, that's right. <laughs> they were grand events. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should let him talk a little. I well, we, we were only at one we of his. We were, only, we were only at one of his weddings. He's only been I, married once. You know. So, you know, Bruce, well, we, we were talking a little before the show here. Uh, one of the things we want to do tonight, because uh, when we were on 25 or 26 years ago, I'm, I'm not good with math, as we all know, we, uh, we, start, we started the show on WHK Radio, and Stuart Fenton was part of the Fabulous Boomer Boys, but he decided that uh, his career was more important than our hobby. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> and he went on, to, and he decided after 13 weeks to bail on us, but it's okay, we stay friends. And uh, so we thought we would do kind of the same sort of show we did on WHK Radio, which was just a radio show, unlike a webcast tonight where you can see us. And um, we had great faces for radio in those days. And I think what happened was that uh, we took a lot of phone calls and we had uh, guests as well as did the news. So why don't we maybe start tonight like we did back yeah, then? What was the format back then? I think we did the news first, right? Right, I think so, yeah. Right? Right. Bob spoke first, I remember that. Bob always speaks first. <laughs> and last. Well, you guys call, I was the quarterback, just That's like right. I was in the touch That's football right. games too. I was the quarterback of the show, right. Okay. Right, go, so, uh, go for it, quarterback. So go ahead, Stuart. I know you still keep up with the news. You're, re you're retired. News. All you do all day is watch the stock market. And sit home. How tell us. How do you know what I? Well, think? I can only guess. I know you. So, what? Tell us what do you think are some of the news things to talk about. Well, actually, it's kind of a sad day today. Did everybody hear that Tim Conway died? Yeah. I don't know if he did. I mean, I think he was unbelievable. He was one of the funniest men that you'll ever see. And I don't know if you watched the Carol Burnett shows. It was really terrific when he would get together. With Harvey Corman? Yes. I don't yeah. know if you remember that one dental scene oh, that they had. I mean, I, it, may be, it may be one of the funniest scenes that they had in history. So but, that's and he was from Cleveland. Things, and he was from Chagrin Falls. Falls. Well, right. I, did, I used to watch him on McHale's Navy before that. He's on McHale's oh, right, Navy. right, McHale's. Damn. You know, the person that I kind of I feel sad about, and um, Peggy Lipton. Peggy Lipton, the Mod Squad. Right. I mean, didn't you have a crush on her? I wasn't allowed She was to one watch. of the it girls back then. Like Peggy Lipton. Yeah. Remember, was she hot? I see Barry Siegler, Jamie Heber, Jimmy Masseria, people we went to school with also. They're here. I know you guys might have done something in, in your rooms privately when you watched the Mod Squad, you know? 
I mean, Peggy Lipton, come on. What is he talking about? I don't know. He doesn't know how to dress for the show. Nothing. 26 years ago, it hasn't changed. No, no. it's not any funnier now. I, I wasn't allowed to watch the Mod Squad. I believe that. Well, as Doris say, she died. Uh, did you hear that she died as well? She would say, K Sarah, Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> will be, will be, right. <laughs> Right. Did you hear what she said? She's not having a memorial service. No. She doesn't want it. What's she doing? She was always afraid of death and didn't like death. She's not having a stone. She's not having anything. So what are they, they doing? Are they throwing her body away? What, what well, they, I didn't read that far. I don't know. You got bored? <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't mention it. Now I'm having services. Are you going to have services when you go, Bob? Yes. Well, uh, tell the truth, Bruce. You've already asked me to be the person that does your eulogy. Yes, I have. Because I can't you, wait. I, I tell cannot you why. wait. Very honestly, because they know I, you're going to be there story. talking anyway. I, you know. <laughs> Stuart will be crying. I wouldn't be I able to well, put it together. I no. Uh, You'll be I, saying, I Bruce, one of the fabulous boomer boys. Da, 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 da. I know, I know how you'll go. Well, no, you gave me specific me instructions. Wear a tie. That's all I ask. Okay. Wear a tie. Well, you oh, gave me a way. Didn't you get the dress code for this evening? No, I noticed that. I noticed, you know, these guys used to do this to me on radio. They planned to do certain things. And then we'd go and we'd go on the air and they and all of a sudden they'd do something. I had no idea they were gonna pull on me, like tonight with their Just like the old days. Just like the old we days. Want, the old we days. always wanted to teach you a lesson, which is a quarterback is nothing without his team. That's right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you know who's applauding the hardest? My wife. <laughs> You know, really. Hey, let's not forget somebody else that's here. Can we get the camera over on one of our other uh, friends since the third grade, Dr. Arthur Wolfiler? Uh, yeah. Yeah, look towards the camera. Arthur, turn around. Let him see you on the camera. There he is. I, uh, excuse me, sorry, Kraut. I can beat that. Way back there in left center field, someone I met a couple months after Stewart in 55, Jimmy Masseria. He was, that's right. I'm telling you right now, he was the first, absolutely the first Christian I ever met. <laughs> Well, if you went to Roland School, people yeah. would understand that, other than your teachers. Yeah. Right? Other, other than the teachers. teachers at Roland School. That was pretty Is much the case. Really Christian? Yeah. Well, he didn't he, take off the Jewish holidays. He took off the Jewish Always. holidays. <laughs> All of them. And he never, you know what, Jimmy never got in trouble for it. Right? I remember, Jimmy? Jimmy? Isn't that true? I remember the story. We all, in, in those days, uh, how times have changed, they did not give uh, people, students off for the Jewish holidays. And there you go, Mrs. Allison right. shaking her head. Right. But we, you know, we would take off for the Jewish holiday, and Jimmy would as well, because the school is like 99% Jewish. And I remember this story, Jimmy telling me. So the principal called him in, Jimmy, why weren't you here yesterday? He said it was Rosh Hashanah. She, <laughs> it's a true and she, story. And she says, you know what? You're right. And, then, and that was it. And Jimmy, every year after that. So really, Jimmy was a groundbreaker. There you go. Yeah. We're so glad he's here with us tonight. Yeah. Stuart, tell us a story about Jimmy, about how he inflicted corporal punishment on you back in Rowan School's lawn back in the mid- Wait, uh, before you give the funny part of the story, let me just say one of the things we talked about before the show, how different life is now for our kids and our grandkids as opposed to when we were baby boomers, and most of you here tonight are baby boomers, yeah. growing up, how, you know, there was, we didn't have, we had bullies, but we didn't have bullying. You know, I mean, if you got bullied, you handled it, you know? And it wasn't, it wasn't the kind of thing where there was really awful, people weren't committing suicide no. because of bullying. Jerry, least, Wolf, Jerry Wolf would come take our ball and hit it on the roof of the, of the school. Right. That was bully. He well, was a bully. You have to get the ball. Yeah, you went on the roof to get it. I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, no. But, but your parents wouldn't let you go up on the roof. I wasn't allowed to do much. They weren't, you weren't allowed. But now, uh, you know, okay, so tell the story about Jimmy because this would be a story now he'd go to jail if he did this. Oh, well, no, we would go to jail. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, he'd go, he, he, he'd go to jail. What well, I mean, he'd go, he'd go to, uh, what are they, detention home or something. I don't know. First of all. Instead of the stuff we did, we would have gone to jail. Well, that's true, Jamie. Right. Okay. First of all, you got to go back to Roland School. If I ask these guys here what was one of their best times that they ever had in their life, it would say Roland School, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. I, 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 I'd that have was to the center of everything. We grew up in a blue-collar community, right? And we didn't go to overnight camp. Our camp was Roland School, and it was wonderful. Or, or where I lived, Bexley Park. It was terrific. Yeah. And what happened? We spent the whole day there. We used to go at seven in the morning, and we'd get there outside of school when it was the summer, 
And we would play there. We would play baseball. We would play swift pitching. We would have all of that. And we would get on each other's nerves. We would tease each other. And Jimmy had an aunt, his Aunt Agnes. And I thought, for some reason, the name was kind of funny. So I kept doing something that I probably shouldn't have done. And I'd go, Agnes. <laughs> and I would do it over and over again. And some of you that may know me know that I can get a, get like that. So oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Now it's your wife's turn to clap. Right at now. any rate, the, the, the whole story is that Jimmy got back at me one day and chased me and got me down on the ground and made me eat grass. Do you remember that? <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, Tell the whole thing. And that's he not marijuana, ahead. the he real grass. He got somebody yeah. to sit on me. He got so Morton Cone to sit on you. Morton Cone was the biggest guy in the schoolyard. He had him sit on you. And we had a, they used to call it, I don't think you can say this anymore, but I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. We used that's to call right. it Chinese water torture. And they used to throw grass at him. And people would go, please let me up, let me up, let me up. That's you, right. You, 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 you're really a mobster back then, Jimmy. i got to tell you. Well, you know, what, a lot of us haven't changed. How many of you in the audience have a daily routine? Anybody here? Okay, so you've got the, Anybody do crossword puzzles? Okay, a bunch of you are saying you do crossword puzzles. I've got a different routine. When I get up, Every morning in my email, there's two, three, or four obituaries. And this is my crossword puzzle. And you'll have to guess who does this. You get these obituaries, and I have to find a link to the obituaries. Let me give you an example. Do you know the song back in the 60s, Don't Pull Your Love Out On Me, Baby, by Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Ralph? Yeah, don't pull your heart out. So I get an obituary, a guy named Hamilton died, Frank somebody died, Joe died, and somebody named Reynolds died. And guess which, which, which person sends that to me every morning? Bruce. Bruce Bruce. <laughs> So some things haven't changed. Yeah, well, it's all good stuff. It's all good right, stuff. Right, okay. So, so of course, so what we're doing here is we're, gonna, we're telling some stories about what we did that you can't do today. And Stuart brought this up to us earlier. We were talking, because Stuart and I, I mean, let's t say, we talk almost every day. throughout. And he lives in Florida now, six months out of the year, almost seven months. And somehow we still managed uh, to, to, to talk. stay in touch. But, and Stuart loves the phone, but what he does hate is robocalls, mm -hmm. which we didn't have that back in our day. But what we did have was somebody like Stuart who liked to make prank calls. Now, anybody ever make prank calls? Yeah. 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 Well, Stuart did prank calls way before Howard Stern and much more creatively, and they were not um, pornographic. So what he it was just fun. Just fun. So what I, I'm going to give you the lead in, and then you take it from there, okay? Thank you, boss. All right, I'm the quarterback. <laughs> I was a quarterback. So okay. uh, Stewart had a relative that had a phone in those days. It was a big, a new thing where you could make three-way calling. And of course now we didn't call cell phones, so people didn't know who called. You couldn't have caller ID, anything like that. You couldn't press nine. This was before all that, so you could find who called you. So Stewart found somebody that had a three-way call. We had a friend who had just recently broken up with his girlfriend. But it was a pretty tough breakup from both people. I think I can say that. We don't want to give total names on this, but Bruce and I know who they are, too. Yeah, and if you email me, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, if you email us, we'll tell you who. But go ahead. Take no, it from I there. Mean, I, I thought it was fascinating. I mean, now, you know, if you call, if you call they got caller ID, and you know who's calling. And some guy tells me this was actually my brother-in-law's friend who had a furniture business. And he's saying, I got a conference call. Like, I've got conference call ability. And I said, what's that? And he explained to me what it was. And I grabbed this guy. And I said, let's go to this furniture store and let's see what we can do. And he showed us how it worked. And the way that it worked, in case you don't know, back then it wasn't as sophisticated as it is now. You called somebody and then you called someone else. So you got two lines ringing. So two people are answering and I'm there and I can talk or I cannot talk if I want. And he didn't and talk. Did nobody, nobody did this. So we got, we got a guy who had a girlfriend who had broken up. So I call the two of the people, and they answer the phone, and they're saying, what do you want? And the other one's saying, you called me. <laughs> they say, I didn't call you, you called me. There's one classic, hangs classic. Up, and one of them hangs up. Okay, so guess what I do? Call I call them back. 
<laughs> this went on, but this was a lot of fun. So we did that. Well, they tell the end of the story. They'd both come yeah. to school. They're back. They'd come back to school that day, and the girl would tell her girlfriends, I, "This guy won't leave me alone." And the guy would come to school. He says, "I don't understand. She breaks up with me, and then she calls me all the time." And of course, Stuart <laughs> let me know. in on the joke. And the guy would come to me, and he'd say, "You know, what should I do?" I said, "Well, you know, just just live with it. You'll, you'll hang, go on." And that's right. That's see, right. the big thing is. That was clean fun. You do right. that now and someone gets a lawyer and they, and they go to the police, you're harassing them. Oh, right, right, right. That yeah. was clean fun. Another yeah. story related to that. Anybody remember the old Campbell soup jingle? Mmm, <laughs> um, good. Mm. That's, That's Campbell's Campbell soup soup soup. Soup. Mm. All right, so if good. you have so a conference it. call, you could do this kind of thing again. So you do thing in we New didn't York. Even, we didn't even do conference calling. We no, picked, we did that we before just, the conference call. We just calling, picked up the phone and called. Yeah, well, let me give you the backdrop there. Stuart and I, when we graduated uh, college, worked for Bruce's father for a wonderful magazine, Highlights for Children. You've all seen it in a dentist's office, probably got it. You get it for your grandkids or your kids, right? Stuart and I, we can say this, and, and I'm, I'm going to brag about it. We were the two top salesmen in the country for Highlights for Children. I have bad news for you. I kept all the magazines from that newspaper. I mean, from Highlights, I've got all the bulletins. I'm gonna check it out. I'm okay, gonna bring the ratings right. next week. Okay, well anyway, we sold through the, through the schools rather than through dentist's office. But anyway, so we were in New York City. You'd think there, there's a million things to do. Stuart still got on the phone, and <laughs> what'd you do? I called Tell my me. mother's cousin, and I go through this, and she sings the jingle, and she doesn't get her case of soup. Yeah, you guys, the thing was, there was a real commercial being done at that time. It was a real, was a real Hi, thing. my name is John Jones. Ted Brown. Ted, New, was that his name? In New York City. And if, New you, York City. if you sing me the Campbell Soup commercial. I'll send you a case of your favorite yeah. soup. I have a cousin, Pinky. I called, we called, I can't remember how it was. And then her, her father died, my Uncle Benny. Half a year later, we're sitting around the house and she's telling a story about my husband, Donnie, who was a lawyer. He's gonna write a letter because we never got our soup. <laughs> <laughs> well, my cousin, my mother's cousin did the same thing. My mother's cousin calls my mother and said, you know, she's bragging that she won this case of soup. And when the soup doesn't come, she calls up Camels and they sent her out two cases of soup. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, now you got these crazy robocalls, but I think my sister in Boca Raton, Florida, has the answer to this. I'm visiting her, this was two months ago, and a robocall comes, and she tells the person, can you hang on a second? She pulls out a whistle from the cabinet and whistles oh. as loud as she can oh, into wow. the phone. I don't think I could hear her for about two weeks. Yeah, That's right. a good answer to that. Yeah, that would be. That well, there's another way. Right. I, you know how I deal with it? How do you do and that? I learned this maybe 25 years ago when I was going through the roughest part of my life, and I get bill collectors <laughs> calling me. I would just say, Bruce died. <laughs> And I knew what they would do. They would look for an estate opening. They didn't find an estate. Then they figured the son of a bitch died poor, and they closed the file. That's the end of it. <laughs> no problem with that. Now you tell me that. Where were you 25 years ago when I needed that story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, so those are some of the things that yeah. we could do and do that. There was a serious thing, though, that we were talking about, Stuart. This was a few weeks back when uh, we had Miss Ribald Allison on our show, that when you first which is why she was such a good teacher, and she's here tonight, so I'm going to bring it up. You told me that that's, you started wearing glasses. I just talked to her about that. I told her this story. Tell, tell, tell everybody about that. Just so that you hear it. She was such a wonderful teacher, my favorite teacher that I ever had. But if you think back, I got a, a prescription from an eye doctor to wear eyeglasses in the fourth grade. Yeah. That was a lot earlier than most people had to wear them. And I was kind of a quiet kid back then, and I was really worried about it. And Miss Ribald saw that I was a little worried, and she asked me what was going on, and I explained to it. And she was just so comforting, and she said, I'm wearing glasses, and they're really fashionable. And it was really, you know, as you say, a serious kind of thing. Something that makes an impression your whole life. It really right. does. Well, it does. Help me out. Let's give a hand for our team. That's why they named the street after her. That's at, right. At Orange, at the Orange Schools on the campus. It's Alice, Gail Allison Drive. I mean, how many people have a street named after them? I mean, honestly. Hey, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. When you mention that story from the fourth grade, it's hard for me not to think 
the only year that Stuart and I were in the same class was fifth grade. We had Miss yep. Schaefer. Miss Schaefer. Okay. Joy Schaefer. And that was the year. What a mistake that was, putting you to my, the same To class. my memory, that was the first year they would have those 20-minute, they call them movies, they were the films, about sex education. Oh, okay. right, 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 right. So, Stuart and I, <laughs> Here we so go. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. You got to hear this. <laughs> So on the thing, they, they see they show like a, a silhouette of a woman, a young girl, and they say her breasts are going to begin to spurt monthly as she goes through puberty. So there was one lady in our class who was ahead of the game, and um, Stuart and I decided. Sure, I, KF? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, okay. Stuart, I, Stuart oh. says, I don't, I don't know if it was your idea or mine, but we decided that no one can watch her all the time because we thought we were going to catch the spurt and we're going to see it. <laughs> so we would rotate. We're fifth graders. What do we know? You know, we would rotate. It must have been your idea because two years, two idea. years later, no, my parents were going through a divorce and my father wasn't able to tell me the facts of life because every time he'd start the story, he burst into laughter. He never finished. <laughs> so Stuart taught me the facts of life. Okay. Now that explains why I was very yeah, yeah, yeah. slow. That's right. why it took you a while oh, to absolutely. catch up. Right. You guys were way ahead of me. Yeah. Well, yeah. well that, how long has it been since we've done this show? Uh, well, I thought it was 25 years. We Bruce? started in 93. 93, Because okay. we started right after Bill Clinton was elected, remember? the next. That's right. Okay, later. that's a good way to remember, right. Do you so, realize the Cleveland Browns haven't won their division since then? <laughs> <laughs> this is an entertainment show. We're trying to keep you uplifting. Just bringing that that's up, sad. how long it is. Isn't that sad? Uh, well, you know, I would say we got a, uh, we got a message from uh, one of our other friends who went to school, uh, Ricky Herman. My, nice every, message. Right, nice message. Right. He was in the uh, smart class. Okay. He went, Mr. Carnes. Ricky and I sat next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> no. Is that why I was only with you for one year? One year, Stuart. It's all you have. They made a mistake yeah. that year. So, no, I was uh, with, Joel, with Joel Cohn and Ricky Herman. When he heard that Stuart was going to be on the show again, and he said to me uh, that um, he appreciated the fact and wanted to watch the show because. Um, being able to watch this, he could say that uh, this is the kind of thing that uh, links all of us to the past. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. We are. You know, we, we were so lucky to grow up in that generation and have that. And uh, the show was wonderful to do with you guys 26 years ago. It really was. Well, if it was that good, why'd you quit after 13 weeks? Right. <laughs> I was making money. I uh -huh. had to work. Good. I was traveling. Yeah, he did travel. We've got to give him that. I'll give you he that. He was going to miss him. He, but he's retired twice now. Yeah, this is twice you've retired, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you know, seventh year. Yeah, we, we did do a one, one more gag that we did on, on that show. It wasn't a gag. It was a real thing. We used to, uh, now remember, we're on big time Cleveland radio. Morning, you know, we're doing uh, WHK. 50,000 50, watts. Yeah, you know, we're doing, well, there was 5,000. But anyway, they had, uh, we, can't we did an actual remote. Remember that? We we're, did a remote. Uh, Stuart was a jogger back in those yeah, days. I didn't want to give up my, I was uh, addicted to the jogging and running with my friend of almost 50 years over here, Richard Kaplan. He's here tonight, right? He's here right. tonight. All right. Do you remember? Yeah. He's, he's, he's older remember? than we are, though, isn't he? Isn't he older than we are? So when we started, yeah, right. wait, hold on, guys. When we started, we were, we were doing it an hour in the Tuesday night or Monday, whatever, one night right, a week. Right. Stuart quit before we went to morning drive. Right, so this was, a, so this was, was, happened, was no. an aberration. Here's no, we, I we, remember why. Do you remember why? Yeah, we filled in for the morning drive Merle guy. Merle Paulus went Paulus. to the hospital, and they asked us if we would take a show one day. Right. So we said, yes. Yeah, I'm not giving up my run. That's right. right. <laughs> Stuart wouldn't do it. But we, but, but we got him. How did we do it? Go ahead. Tell, go ahead, Stuart. I, ran, I, I literally ran down to the studio. Right. I don't know if Marilyn remembers that, my wife. Yeah. But he I ran down to the studio. He had a remote. We had a remote you did, thing hooked wait, up. Wait, you stopped right. somewhere along the way. But he stopped along the way on the run. There was this huge demonstration at the... Uh, I don't know if they actually the do the clinic. do they do the abortions there or not? Are the people so. going to check in? Right, preterm pre pre right. clinic. That's right. The preterm clinic happened pre to be the same day. There was a huge uh, demonstration. He's in his jogging shorts, stopping there, and he basically did some man on the street interviews with the people who were there. And made it down to the studio. And I got to tell you, the station was so impressed with us that we would do something so serious, and uh, as the obviously we. It's one topic Bruce and I have never talked about since, until this day, abortion. And uh, because it is such a serious topic, and I don't think we're qualified to talk about it. But that day, we did with Stuart stopping there. Do you remember? 
I think you were in a show. It was an evening show. You must have been there. There's this, there was this guy running for mayor in South Euclid. Yeah, I and remember. The hour before our show was, as far as I know, the first openly gay commentator had a show in the same studio. And so this guy who was running for mayor in South Euclid in 1993 came into our studio wearing a surgeon's mask. He didn't want to catch anything. <laughs> and he I'll brought light, and he brought uh, like Lysol or something like that. Oh. And he was, he was horrible. He, he also said the Jews killed Lincoln. Well, Remember? I did say yeah. that again, right, right? Yeah. I mean, we knew what kind of guy this could have been. We had a great time with him. Oh, we had a riot. But he, I mean, he sprayed down everything and <laughs> wiped right. it off. And, you know, we're just, you know, we didn't, we knew we were in for a great time. I mean, we cut him to shreds. And yeah. I think he got about five votes, you know. We had good but, guests back then. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Deepak Chopra. Remember our Chopra? first guest? First guest ever. Deepak Chopra. Oh. Johnny Holiday. Johnny Holiday. Bye bye chicken fat and save the whack. Right? That's right, bye Johnny. Who's now the uh, what does he do? The Ravens uh, color commentary. We had the guy. He does, we yeah. had Bob Berkowitz, who used to do that sex show on CNBC. Yeah. That's you still didn't know anything about sex when he was on. No, no. <laughs> right. Well, one thing needs to be said. We're joking around, and we can, and, and and we have a core friendship, but Bobby and I have stumbled a bit in life. Stewart's had one asset that we never had: a lifetime. And he's been the same solid woman his entire life. Yeah. Right. Just this guy, if you get a shot at her, like, Marilyn, give it, turn that way for a second. There you go. Yeah. Very, very lucky guy. You are. You're right. Yeah, he, he, did, he did fix me up with her sister, but it didn't take. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> We're running out of time. Do we have time to talk about the entertainment that we used to do in the old show? Oh, yeah. We oh, yeah. Well, this is very oh, important. We've got to do this. Forget that. No, this is a very big part of our show, and I, and I can say yeah, this in all honesty. Fun. You know, we always wonder in radio if people are watching you or are listening to you, just like this show. We don't know. I mean, the other day we were lucky enough at the Boomer Fest that a lot of people tell us they watch the show. Dan Coughlin complimented us, you know, after being on. He said so people come up to him. It makes us feel great, and we're glad all of you are here and those watching tonight as well. But in radio, you really you didn't know. And um, I don't, you know, do you want to take it from there? I, well, we did a, we did a, um, Charitable thing. Movie review. No, well, but before oh. you, we did. We were invited <laughs> to the uh, Jerry Lewis Telethon yeah. to try and get money, and it was hosted in those days. Channel Eight, Wilma Smith, Dick Goddard. We, everybody in Cleveland knows who those people they are. A, if you're yeah. a baby boomer, they would break to the local stations on the hour for a from Jerry Lynn. Yeah. yeah, right. And and you okay, honey? Okay. So anyway, uh, she always has to get on the air. <laughs> that's going to you know, cost you. That's going to cost you. You wait until 25 minutes tonight. You know. Anyway, but we had, uh, yeah, raise your hands up, buddy. Okay. Uh, so we uh, were on the Jerry Lewis uh, muscular dystrophy telethon. And uh, Wilma Smith, before we went on the air, they introduced us to her. And um, we figured she didn't know who we were. You know, they put us on a four o'clock in the afternoon segment or something. And she goes, you know, you guys have a great show, but I can't stand the way you do your movie reviews. And I'll tell you why. Yes, we did the movie reviews. Stuart. <laughs> and tell them what you did. Tell them what oh, you did. Tell, tell, tell them, go ahead. Come on, I did you're... the movie reviews, except I figured if it wasn't a good movie, I gave away the ending. <laughs> <laughs> there weren't too many of them. It was Tom Berenger. Sliver. Yeah, Sliver. Right. Sliver. That was a Sliver and Todd Barron. Billy so, Baldwin. Right. So tonight. Sharon Stone. Right. Oh, boy, was she great. Anyway, tonight, for our baby boomers here, not as many of them are going to watch the show you're going to interview, but certainly enough Review? of them do. Do people here watch Game of Thrones? How many people here watch Game, Game of, of Thrones? Thrones? A little bit? Yeah, a little clap so we know, people oh, can't see your hand. Not too many. Not too many. All right. Well, I watch it, but All right. a lot of the you people watch it. You don't know who Jamie Lannister is. I don't know if it's male or female. Ned Stark? No, how do no. I know these people? All right. All right. Well, Give us a little. We've got one episode left, so you can't tell the whole thing, but you can catch people up tonight. Tell them who died last week. I don't know. Do you think I should do that? Yeah, it doesn't matter. They, they, you know, if they haven't seen it. Well, this is the eighth season, and I consider it to be one of the best shows ever to be on TV. <laughs> and there's six episodes this season, and they just finished the fifth. And uh, it's one of the highest rated shows ever on Internet Movie Database. Does anybody ever use that? I don't know what it means. It's a great resource that rates all television shows and movie shows. And it's coming up to the end of it. It's really an interesting show because they've got 
unbelievable characters, and it's about eight families who are vying in medieval times for the Iron Throne. And, it, and we're getting, next Sunday, we're going to learn who does that. And I thought that Circe, Queen Circe, was one of the people that was going to get it, but I can share with you that she is not going to get it. She has... She has perished. She's dead. <laughs> so you'll have to watch next week well, to see what happens. And in Las Vegas, they're, in they Las actually Vegas, are betting on it. They're betting on it. They're betting on it. Why can't you put money down in Vegas? What are you doing? No, no, no. It's too, they did bef before the season oh, started. Oh. So and, 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 like each week now, the, uh, the, there's so who fewer. Who do you think it's going to be? Well, you know, I think Aria. Aria or Sansa. They're, they're two, two sisters. I think, you know, a lot of people think Jon Snow. I think it's going to be saying so also. Okay. Well, I'm getting the signal from our technical okay. Tyler Plebin here. Can I, I, before you wrap up, can I just I'm, thank you guys for having me? No. Okay. I mean, no. Yeah, thank you for, thank you for coming. And i got to thank Arthur for coming and Jimmy and Gary and Jamie and most of all, Miss Rigel. This was really special. Okay. I, I, before we get to Bruce's final comment, I just want to remind everybody, next week uh, we are going to have Peggy Zone Fisher on. And um, those of you that saw our show with Lee Fisher, you know how much fun he was. And they say his wife is even more fun to have on. So we're looking forward to that. She is uh, currently the um, CEO of the Diversity Center of Northeast Ohio. A lot of you might remember the Diversity Center used to be known as the uh, National Conference for Christian and Jews. So that's kind of a serious topic, but she also has uh, been in charge of a uh, travel agency. Her family is very involved in politics, and she's really traveled the world with leaders from Cleveland, uh, mm -hmm. pushing Cleveland over the years in Northeast Ohio. So we're going to talk about some of that, and I think she's going to be a great guest. So we encourage all of you uh, to come in Tuesday to watch it, and if you can't be here live, Certainly watch it on our broadcast on YouTube. And don't forget, hit the like and subscribe, because one of these days we are going to be the number one webcast for baby boomers on right. YouTube. Okay? <laughs> All right. Did you, uh, well, well said, but did you tell her we're not going to talk politics? Well, she's you, been here. She knows. Okay, she knows. Okay, because we can't talk about politics. I'll talk diversity all, all you want. Right. We'll talk well. PC all you want. Right. By the way, Stuart, thank you very much. Listen, Bob was nice today, so I will not call you tomorrow first thing to complain. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> promise? I might even go to my Wednesday breakfast with the guys because he's, he's somewhat behaved. No, I hope you will. Okay. Hey, I, got, I need to say this like I say it every week. Alan, thank you for saving my life. Our security <laughs> man, Alan, thank you very much. Pear, get well. That's all I got. All right, and we hope you're here next week for Peggy's Own Fisher. Thanks for all of you that came here and those of you watching at home or wherever you watch on YouTube. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you all next week.